We need to score at least 814 runs in order to win those games and allow no more than 645 runs. Sports analytics to me is, uh, is basically using metrics and using data, hopefully in an effort to become more efficient and more consistent with your uh, decision making. There's something that can be measured uh, in every business. Hopefully help people make uh, better decisions and, and can also create a process, an objective process. An island of misfit toys. Moneyball. The mathematical madness behind the regular season success in the early 2000s by the Major League Baseball team, Oakland Athletics. The film is based on Michael Lewis's 2003 nonfiction book of the same name, an account of the Oakland Athletics baseball team's 2002 season and their general manager Billy Bean's attempt to assemble a competitive team. In the film, Bean, Brad Pitt, and assistant GM Peter Brand, Jonah Hill, with the franchise's limited budget for players, build a team of undervalued talent by taking sophisticated sabermetrics approach to scouting and analyzing players. This little fact of info is really here nor there, but Billy Bean went to my high school, Mount Carmel High, back in the day in San Diego, California. While Billy and I may have the same alma mater, that doesn't mean I won't do my job on breaking down the facts from fiction and Hollywood's portrayal of this story and if his scouting methods actually change the game of baseball. Hello, and welcome to Sports Vaults, presented by Data Productions, uncovering the untold, lost, and forgotten files of the sports world. In the movie, Billy Bean is hurt by the team's loss to the New York Yankees in the 2001 American League Division Series. With impending departure of star players Johnny Damon, Jason Giambi, and Jason Isringhausen to free agency, Bean needs to assemble a competitive team for 2002 with Oakland's limited budget. During a scouting visit to the Cleveland Indians, Bean meets Peter Brand, a young Yale economics graduate with radical ideas about how to assess player value. Rather than relying on the Oakland scouts' experience and intuition, Brand and Bean use this methodology to hire undervalued players such as unorthodox submarine pitcher Chad Bradford, aging outfielder David Justice, and injured catcher Scott Hatberg. The scouts were hostile towards the strategy, and Bean fires head scout Grady Fusan after he accuses Bean of destroying the team. Bean also faces opposition from Art Howe, the athletics manager, with tensions already high between them due to a contract dispute. Howe disregards Beans and Brand's strategy and plays a more traditional lineup that he prefers. Thanks to a walk-off home run by Bean and Brand's guy, Scott Hattiebert, the Athletics achieved a record-breaking 20 consecutive wins. Bean tells Brand he will not be satisfied until they change baseball by winning the World Series using their system. The Athletics, or A's, eventually clinch the 2002 American League West title, but lose to the Minnesota Twins in the 2002 American League Division Series. Bean is contacted by the owner, the Boston Red Sox, John W. Henry, who realizes that sabermetrics is the future of baseball. Bean declines the offer to become the Red Sox general manager despite the $12.5 million salary, which would have made him the highest paid general manager in professional sports history. He returns to Oakland and two years later, the Red Sox win the 2004 World Series using the model, the Athletics Pioneer. Let's now separate the truths from the lies in the movie and book. True, Bean did hire a former Cleveland Indians employee who had graduated cum laude with an economics degree from Harvard. In reality, he was Paul De Podesta, a self-assured former college athlete. False. In the movie, De Podesta is reimagined for legal reasons as Peter Brand, played by Jonah Hill, as a jittery misfit with an economics degree from Yale. De Podesta joined the A's in 1999. Brand starts in 2002. True. Bean was heavily influenced by baseball writer Bill James, whose evocative analyst helped fans see baseball in a whole new light, despite being met with resistance by the baseball establishment. False. Dave Podesta did not introduce Bean to James' work in 2002, as the movie suggests. Former A's manager Sandy Alderson encouraged Bean to read James' revolutionary abstracts as early as 1995. True. 
Scouting director Grady Fuson clashed with Bean over the A's increasing reliance on spreadsheets and soon found himself working with another organization. False. He wasn't fired by Bean after a fit of rage. Fuson left in 2002 for a more prominent position with the Texas Rangers, but then returned to the A's. True. Jeremy Giambi was the team's discount leadoff hitter at the start of the 2002 season and had a reputation for a wild nightlife. False. While the movie suggests he was a new acquisition to replace his brother, Jason, Jeremy Giambi was already with the team. The A's got him from the Royals on February 18, 2000. True. The A's really did win their 20th consecutive game against the Kansas City Royals on September 4, 2002 when Hedeberg, pinch hitting for Eric Burns, hit a homer on a 1-0 pitch from Jason Grimsley in the bottom of the ninth. This scene was so accurate, they even had the other team scores correct from that day. More so, the movie depicts the Oakland Athletics as a floundering organization that hasn't ever reached the pinnacle in the sport, hence the need for change to compete. That's simply not the case. Moneyball doesn't give you a picture of what baseball in general and the Oakland A's in particular were like before the game entered the era of free agency and before Billy Bean is said to have changed the game. In the 26 seasons before Bean became general manager of the A's in 1998, Oakland was the biggest winner in baseball with six pennants and four World Series victories. The Yankees, by comparison, won five pennants and three World Series over that span. A former Phillies relief pitcher, Mitch Wild Thing Williams, identified something else Lewis overlooked on MajorLeagueBaseball.com. When Oakland won, they didn't win because of sabermetrics. They won because of Mulder, Hudson, Zito, and Tejada. Shortstop Miguel Tejada more or less slips through the pages of Moneyball with little notice. You'd scarcely know that he batted 308 with 34 home runs and 131 RBIs. He simply wasn't Billy Bean's kind of player. Though his on-base percentage was respectable at 354, you get the feeling that he just didn't reach base the right way, the money ball way. In one passage, Bean dismisses him altogether. Oh great, he says with real disgust. Here comes Mr. Swing at everything. Well, Mr. Swing at Everything did reach base 204 times with hits, but that's not Billy Bean's way. As the movie implies, Hattiebert's story is something of a Cinderella tale, and Bean deserves all the credit for recognizing his usefulness. Lewis's misunderstanding of baseball has led a legion of sports writers and fans to revere Billy Bean. But does the record support the hype? To answer that question, we have to confront the A's dismal postseason performance. A factor Bean and Lewis prefer we dismiss. From 2000 to 2003, the A's lost in the first round of the playoffs, the American League Division Series, each year. Their collective record for those four series was 8-12. Even more stunning, given their success during the regular season, the A's had an eye-popping 0-9 in potential clinchers games that would have won the series and sent them on to the next round of playoffs. What's interesting about these four series at three of them were against much larger market teams. Each year Oakland demonstrated that they had the talent to win more games than the big guys, but each time they couldn't play the small ball required to clinch the key games that would have given them the series. All of this is reflective of talents that Bean was largely indifferent to namely fielding and base running, the kind of small things that get overlooked when a general manager is obsessed with large concepts like on-base percentage. And yet, they are still skills that don't require a great deal of money to work on. In sports at its purest form, it's not about the X's and O's or numbers, it's about the Jimmies and the Joes. In big time moments, big time players make big time plays, which is part of the reason why the A's couldn't get over the hump. When it came to playing teams with top-level elite talent across the board in a series, in all, Moneyball is a captivating movie that leaves a lot of holes in the real story. Hollywood tries to keep the real story squeaky clean, but that's just not the case. And did Billy Bean really change the game of baseball? 
that's for you to decide. What's your take on this topic? Did you like the movie? Let me know your thoughts below in the comments and subscribe for more investigation content like this. Join my Patreon today for only $5 to receive a monthly esoteric documentary on your favorite sports athletes and events. Real, raw, uncut, and uncensored without the limitations of YouTube. Join today to see the other side of the sports world.